Right, so to complete our set um, and to match in with the earring that we just did, uh, we're then going to do a bracelet. So I'm going to continue using the chain that I have been using all the way along because it's got some really fantastic loops to attach beads onto. So I'm using it for the entire length of the bracelet. Um, what I've done here is I've already cut one piece to size. A standard bracelet length is approximately 17 and a half centimeters long. Do bear in mind that that is inclusive of the clasp and the ring on the other side. Um, so I'm gonna get my clasp out, ready to attach, as well as my ring. If you need a slightly longer bracelet, then what you can do is you can either add extra rings on to increase the length, or you can add what's called a little bit of extender chain, um, and that will give you a little bit more flexibility into the size and the length of the actual bracelet. So in order to attach the clasp and the rings, very straightforward, we just open up one of our rings. This is a split ring, so I've got the split going up towards the sky, and positioning the pliers on each side of the split, I push it forward, slide it on, and put my other ring into position and close it up the same way. Making sure that the other ring is also well closed and it's not slightly off because that can scratch and hurt the wrist as well. What I do want to make sure is that the ring on that side and the clasp on that side meet well so that they're not turning in the wrong direction. So when they come to meet and join, they're not slightly twisted because that can alter the design of your piece. And then I'm going to just attach another ring onto this side of the bracelet and then slot the clasp onto there too. The clasp has a lovely little loop on the very end and that's what we use to attach it onto the ring. We don't want to attach it onto the big hole because that is reserved for closing up the clasp and completing it uh, once it's on our wrist. Okay, doke. So now I'm actually going to lay out my design. I'm going to do it pretty much the way I've been doing it all the way through this project in which I want to play around with some ideas. So I'm going to use my head pins uh, to help me lay out the designs and then I'm actually going to grab some beads and see what works best. So I've grabbed one of my fuchsia faceted beads and I'm going to position that there. And we're going to get some spikes involved as well. So a fuchsia bead. Maybe one of our striking purple faceted rondel beads. A spike in between that one. And then to mirror that bead, I'll use the same shape again in the purple glass faceted bead. I quite like that design. I think because it's a smaller link or loop in between, I might use some of the little mini clusters that we prepared earlier or that I was working with on the other profiles. So I'm also going to use one of the sparkly beads in, in there. We've got to have a bit of sparkle in there. So bearing in mind, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat these designs on the corresponding links. So that's going to be a fuchsia bead. Um, that means that there'll be another fuchsia bead there. So I'm just gonna put that there to see what it's gonna look like. And then I can judge what the in-between beads will look best. If I place that there, it's going to be fuchsia heavy. So I'm going to move that to the other side and then I can use this more ready-toned semi-precious cluster there. That will balance it out nicely. And then I'm going to repeat the patterns all the way along. I'm just going to flip these over because when I start to attach my beads, that's gonna disrupt the, uh, the layout. So I'm doing a little bit of damage control there. Right, let's have a look and see if this works all the way along. Do 
do remember, as with the, the necklace, the way things are laid out always looks a little bit fuller on the flat. So when you hold up the bracelet, the beads will probably fall together and be a little bit more bunchy and clustery. It's quite cool though, because that actually creates a bit of a jangliness, um, which is quite fun to wear. So let's see, we'll continue on with our little pattern. I think I'm liking this one so far. And I'm just going to repeat that right to the end. Something worth noting is that there are times when a bead hole is actually a bit bigger than the head pin or the ball pin which is what has happened in this case. Obviously that would be a case of a lost bead. So let's just see if we can find another pin that might work better with this particular bead. Otherwise I'm going to try another bead uh, that perhaps the hole is slightly smaller. Okay, I have found one that works. So for the first section, we're going to attach the beads to the first two links as we've done throughout the whole process. It's a case of creating the loop at the top of the bead using our round nose pliers. We're going to do that with the next one too. So I'm positioning uh, my cutter above the bead approximately one centimeter to cut off any excess. And then I want to do my loop. So it's the Y in between the pliers, and now I'm going to roll that until I've created my loop. And I just keep on going doing the same thing. Okay, I'm going to attach my first two segments so that you get a good idea of how, the, how it progresses. Um, so to attach these, we're actually going to use jump rings because it gives it a lot more movement um, and when it's on the wrist that's a lot more fun to have a bit more movement and jangliness. So I'm using fairly decent sized jump rings or split rings. Um, I'm going to do another little production line. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight components to start off with, and then we'll continue for the rest of them after that. Okay, so catch the bead into your jump ring, and then we can position that onto the loop. and continue along with your pattern. I'm pushing the ones that I've already loaded on towards me so that they're out of the way and they don't confuse what I'm doing. Also be sure to be, be aware that you're beading on the same side of the, the chain rather than on the top and the bottom, unless of course that's part of your design. the end of my first section. Okay, there we go. So having attached my last purple bead onto that one, 
I'm just going to lay it out and see if I'm happy with that. Yeah. So now I'm going to continue on the next section of that. I'm going to attach the little mini clusters that are already connected by a little jump ring. I'm going to use the bigger jump ring to attach that on to the bracelet too. Making sure I follow in the pattern so that the colours don't clash. And then putting on the sparkle ball. And my last little cluster. Which again is connected by a little tiny jump ring that is threaded onto the larger jump ring. I'm making sure that all my rings are well closed so that nothing falls off. All right, let's just see how that lays out. And then if we're happy to continue in that fashion. So I'm going to repeat this process for the next few links until I come to the end of my bracelet. I'm just going to do a production line of loops as fast as I can um, so that I can then do a little test and see if it hangs well on my, my wrist. So I've completed all the beading on my bracelet by repeating the pattern on the first two links right the way through. And I'm quite pleased with the result. I think it's got a really full feel to it. And I'm just going to see what it looks like on the wrist. There you go. It's a combination of pretty, sparkly, and a little bit spiky, so the perfect fashion bracelet. Now that I've done my bracelet, I can have a look at the set that I've completed um, and have a little recap on that. So when I started out, I had my feature bead. Um, I used a double-ended loop, so a loop on the top and the bottom, enabling me to attach the chain and then the cluster at the bottom. I used the loop technique by using my round nose pliers to create the loops, which were then placed on top of each bead. And then to attach that all to the chain, I used an open jump ring to open and close it. And then I also attached a clasp to the end of my necklace. I did the same thing with my, with my earrings and I did a couple of variations. Uh, so by attaching a, a, a double-ended loop on that bead, I was able to place something on the bottom and on the top and the same thing there. And now I've just repeated the process again with the bracelet. So it's actually quite a straightforward project to do. This is something you can interpret in your own way and create your own fashion design. So, the same process has been used with those two items or those two styles and yet they're two completely different looks. You can scale it up and make it even chunkier. You can scale it down and make it a little bit more reserved. It's really up to you. This is something that's entirely your design. But as it's a fashion item, I would say have fun, go crazy and really embellish. You could even double up your chain and have a multi-chain piece. You can actually bead on both sides of your bracelet and you could even grab a different type of chain and then add some beading along there using the loop and eye technique. So it's really an endless uh, project this and you can just keep on going. I'd like to thank you very much for joining in on this fashion jewellery course and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly have and I'm quite pleased with the results. Thank you very much.